Las Vegas shooting and gun control madness. How the Las Vegas shooting reveals that guns for Gov and not for me is not going to protect you. And if you can see the graphic here, if you're looking at the video here, exploiting the Las Vegas shooting, the gun grabbers gather. My name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv, and this is today's iTalk. You'll notice that my hair looks a little different. I, I had a little, <laughs> had a little accident with the shaving, and uh, yeah, so I ended up having to shave my whole head. This is not a look that I will continue to use going forward, but. It's what I got right now. So as uh, as I prepared to do what what the video that I was actually planning on doing, uh, the news about the details surrounding the horrific Las Vegas shooting that left at least as of now 68 dead and over 400 wounded, uh, it's it's still shifting. And we know the name of the gunman, and I'm not going to repeat the gunman's name. We know that he used at least one rifle with what appeared to be full auto capacity, although maybe it was bump fire, slide fire, uh, not not sure. Uh, and we know that he had uh, at least eight to ten guns in the hotel room from where he opened fire on what what was essentially a a country music contract uh, con concert, but beyond that, yeah, the 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 details keep shifting, and and the claims of one hour become the miz of the next hour. So originally, I fully intended on writing an article about the details of the shooting and using that article, which I'm doing right now to to create this video. Uh, also, what was known, what might come as a result of the shooting, but my focus has shifted. And my focus has shifted to the callous, the calculated, the bloodthirsty tactics of just a few key politicians who are, I can assure you, very representative of the overall reaction from the crowd of sycophants and bootlickers, I call simply the gun grabbers. So this this video that you're seeing now came about because rather than let the family and friends of the dead mourn, rather than let the nation take take in this this what is a horrible 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 tragedy the gun grabbers decided to aggressively militantly go on the offensive in an effort to trigger action that could have powerful consequences on anyone who values what what little liberties still remain in the alleged land of the free so this video that i offer as as well as the article which i will link to as usual in the description and comments below. This video is a counter to the poison pill being pushed by the haters of liberty, the anti-human, anti-freedom, government thug wannabes that are the self-righteous, smug, and far more dangerous than ISIS, at least right here in America, or Antifa for that matter, Cretans that comprise the gun grabber club. So I'm I'm not saying that these folks are ISIS. I'm not saying they're Antifa. I'm not saying that they're terrorists. What I am saying is the actions that they are attempting to precipitate have far more ramifications on your liberty right here in America today than do the actions of ISIS thousands of miles away or even the actions of a very, very small movement called Antifa, which everybody is supposed to be so afraid of. So I want to clarify and make drive home the point. I'm not saying that they're ISIS. I'm saying that they're more of a threat than ISIS. Of course, the comments below, I'm sure the gun grabbers will fail to miss that nuance. And I, and I will say this, by the way, I have no tolerance, none whatsoever for gun grabbers. And it's going to come across in this video, I'm sure. And if you read the article on iState.tv, 
It'll come through in this article as well. So this, this, this group, the gun grabbers, this is the group that advocates for disarming people who are not government agents while they continue to advocate for government agents to possess firearms. You take that in. If you're really against guns, I want to see you advocate for, for banning all guns for everyone. You are not for disarmament of all. You are only for the disarmament of the people who might need the guns the most in case their government goes crazy, which I don't know if you've ever read history, but governments tend to do that. Their knowledge of history clearly it's, it's either significantly lacking or they're flat out openly lying to people because they want to feed their precious little fears and, and they hope that fear will produce more surrender monkey tendencies in an audience that is poorly educated and poorly equipped to be self-reliant. They know that they can't take care of themselves, so they, they imagine that Daddy Gov will protect them, but did Daddy Gov protect anyone in Las Vegas? No. They arrived after the scene. They arrived to count bodies, and that's mostly what they do. And I'm not saying sometimes they haven't protected you, but mostly if you're going to protect yourself, you're going to have to do it yourself. So, again, the type of video I was going to do, radically different than the one I am doing now. The one that I do with, with blood shooting out of my eyes. So first... We get this tweet from the former first lady, former secretary of state, and former failed presidential candidate, Hilly Rodham, Rodham Hard Bill Clinton, the little rape enabler herself. The crowd fled at the sound of gunshots. Imagine the deaths of the shooter had a silencer, which the NRA wants to make easier to get. You see the coupling going on there, don't you? She is equating the NRA to the shooter who murdered at least 68 people, tried to murder a whole lot more, and she's a freaking idiot. Because even if this man had a silencer, people would have noticed immediately other people going down. They would have noticed immediately that they were being shot at. And they would have taken evasive action in the same way that they did now. Even if the man had a silencer, it wouldn't have done a darn bit of good. But this woman chose to use the murder of 68 people to try to push for the ending of, or for actually, for legislation that could actually enable people to use. They're, 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 they're not silencers. They're not silent. They're noise suppressors. Do you know what a noise suppressor enables you to do, ladies and gentlemen? It's, it's, it's not what you see in the movies where, you know, you got the, the hitman, pew, pew, you know, that's, that's not what they're for, man. Uh, and, and honestly, those guys, the hitmen, they're going to get those silencers no matter what. No, they are for so that when you have someone, an intruder, come into your home, you can use a gun with a noise suppressor on it, and you won't have hearing loss, you frickin' ninnies. As you can imagine, as you can see, I am beyond livid at the tactics that this, this, this crowd of cowards is deploying today. But this woman, well, <laughs> she added to her bloodthirsty tweet with this tweet, hell-bent on winning over more surrender monkeys to the cause of gun-grabbing, the consequences of, wh of which this, this rich blue blood from the House of Rodham will most assuredly not have to face. Our grief isn't enough. We can and must put politics aside, stand up to the NRA, and work together to try to stop this from happening again. Man, you, you, you're following the idiocy of what she just said there. I hope you are. Because she's not putting politics aside. Instead, she is using the deaths of 68 
plus people murdered by a madman to push a political agenda. She wants to pretend, even though this harpy from the seventh circle of hell knows full well that pushing for gun confiscation, pushing to take the hands, the guns out of the hands of non-gov people while assuring that gov people have more and bigger guns is most assuredly the very definition of politics. If you want to take politics out of it, Hillary Rodham Clinton, then shut the hell up. That's what I say. You shut the hell up. You let people bury their dead. You let people deal with the horrible tragedy. You don't start tweeting that you're, you want to you want to take politics out of it while you're using the blood of murdered people to advance your murderous, tyrannical agenda. Yeah, you bet I'm mad. If I drop an expletive in this video, you guys will have to understand. I try not to, but it's going to be difficult getting through this one. So, of course... The sycophantic, gun-grabbing crowd chimed in with cheers of atta girls and whatnot. But Hillary Rodham Hard Bill Clinton wasn't the only political goon from the bloodthirsty, gun-grabbing crowd to chime in. Joe Biden, the former lord of the window-licking meme kingdom, chimed in as well with this gem. Again, capitalizing off of murder not even waiting for the bodies to be counted, let alone not waiting for the bodies to go cold. Uncle Joe said, Appalled by the senseless loss of life in Las Vegas, Jill and I hold all those affected and grieving in our hearts. Okay, great. Okay. That's how, that's how he starts off. Not a problem. Now, now, now just so you remember, these... These political, self-righteous shills of the gun-grabbing crowd. They have absolutely, absolutely no problem supporting U.S. bombs raining down on cities where thousands of men, women, and children are being murdered for freedom. So keep their outrage at the deaths of anyone in perspective. And yeah, he's setting you up, appalled by the sense of loss, senseless loss of life. Hey, I, I'm actually appalled by the senseless lo loss of life. But Uncle Joe, I seriously doubt that he's appalled by anything. What he is appalled by is that he hasn't gotten through Congress his gun-grabbing legislation because this man knows he needs it. He's a freaking idiot troll, and more and more people are starting to realize who the freaking idiot trolls are in society. They are up on Capitol Hill. And these people on Capitol Hill, they got to realize, dude, we don't get something passed soon, man. We're going to have some problems. Well, at any rate, <coughs> Uncle... I want to put my hands on your daughter's Joe had more to say, though, in his effort to use murder to convince more people to become surrender monkeys and support gun confiscation. He says, how long do we let gun violence tear families apart? Enough. Congress and the White House should act now to save lives. There's no excuse for inaction. And on top of that, then we have Nancy, you'll have to pass the bill to see what's in it, you little serfs. Pelosi jumped right in with this tweet, which was attached to a letter addressed to House Speaker Paul Ryan. She tweeted, uh, at Speaker Ryan, it's time for action. Congress must create a select committee on gun violence. <laughs> That's right. When the bodies are still dripping with blood, Nancy the Herodin Pelosi wants you to call forth the select committee to do something about gun violence. This woman doesn't give fig one about gun violence. She doesn't give fig one about anyone murdered. Congress had an opportunity to to end the funding of the war in Syria, where the United States, along with its Western partners, has, has directly and indirectly murdered hundreds of thousands of people. And Congress wasn't all that interested in stopping the senseless violence over there. Now, were they? Now, 
to a certain extent, I absolutely understand how members of the political class, how the gated community, political millionaires and billionaires could come to support gun grabbing from non-gov actors. The very lives were built around the power of gov guns over non-gov guns. Their very way of life is predicated upon the power of the state to assure that dissent is met with brutal force if need be. The ability of the state in America at present to crack down on dissent will only be enhanced greatly if they can get more of the people outside of those gated, protected communities to cry out for Daddy Gov to protect them from their scary neighbors. But how is it that so many of you outside of that gated community, so many of you are supporting your own disempowerment do you actually believe government is here to protect you, to serve you, to make your life better? I tell you, if you believe any of this, then perhaps I can recommend you study the history of the state throughout the centuries. And you'll read of example after example after example of the state being more than willing to kill, maim, destroy, threaten anyone who fundamentally challenges their power. And if you really want to know what the state is like, and nothing has changed in 100 years, I, I strongly recommend that you, you watch a series. Uh, it's a documentary series, and it's called 14 Diaries of the Great War, especially Especially, the, I believe it's a seven or eight part series. Well, the last few episodes really, really drive home the point of exactly what the state is and what you are in relationship to the state. I can tell you that your relationship to the state is is not a person that the state serves, but you are one that is expected to serve the state. And when you stop serving the state, when your usefulness is no longer there, the state will grind you down into dust unless it fears that in so doing it will risk a loss of its own power. So I, I realize that there are some who might be reading the, the article that I'll link to and, and listening to this video who will be personally offended, personally offended, that someone dares believe that, that, that humans have a fundamental right to defend themselves against all threats, including threats from their own government. Oh. Honestly, I care little about your feelings. I care more about the actions that you might take to empower government agents to feel emboldened to pass laws to set forth a chain of events that eventually ends with men and or women with guns showing up at, 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 at more doors maybe my door, and demanding guns, maybe my guns, if I had any. Of course, I've lost them all in the boating accident, so there's that. So that your precious feelings might not feel so bruised, and you might not feel so afraid to go out into the world. I want you to realize that a significant number of people give not one fig, not a zip, zilch, for your little feels or your fears. We want you to know that should polls come out that suddenly show support for gun confiscation, should politicians feel that the crowd will cheer their moves to criminalize even further the fundamental right to self-defense, that it will change little the resolve of millions of people to ignore these laws, to ignore your feels, to fight back, if need be against a tyranny that you are unknowingly, or in the case of the leaders, knowingly supporting. Now, I'm not saying that I'm advocating for any of that to happen. I'm saying it's going to happen, you idiots. I don't know who the hell you think you are, but maybe you should remember this. One of my sayings, one of my personal sayings. There is no rule of law. There is only rule of power. And when rule of law goes beyond the power that the individual is willing to grant to the rule of law creator, bad things are going to happen. So you've been warned. 
And I'm going to say this. Never again. Not the Nazis. Not the Maoists. Not the Khmer Rouge. Never again. We will not be disarmed. We will not go gently into that good night. We will not surrender our right to self-defense to satisfy your fears. I cannot express to you enough my utter contempt, my, I'm going to call it my self, my, my, not my self-righteous, my righteous anger at how this day unfolded in the wake of this tragedy. My heart breaks for all those who have been killed, who have been wounded, and for everyone touched by this tragedy. The fact that the gun grabbers could not keep silent, not even for one day, while the dead were still being counted, that should show you all, all that you need to know about the ruthlessness, about the hell-bent nature for power that the crowd is that I call the gun grabbers. The leaders of the gun grabbers club are exploiting the fears of the followers who someday be forewarned. You might find yourselves hoisted on your own petard, done in by your own gov bomb. And that's what you're making. You're making a gov bomb that you're so eagerly built, eagerly building to target people like me, me, my family, my friends, my loved ones, like anyone else who will not bend a knee to the tyranny that you so breathlessly, insanely hope to enable. If and when that day comes, I pray that I might do something that none of you, you gun grabber haters, have offered people like me Extend to you mercy. The mercy that you have never shown, never even understood that you were not showing. For all of my anger, I'm still ready, still willing and able to forgive. But honestly, it's hard to forgive while you're in the midst of watching such, such contemptible actions being played out. In the name of saving lives, you will potentially cost the lives of thousands, if not millions. Maybe not today. Maybe, maybe not tomorrow. But with each disarmament of the non-gov people, it will embolden the next wannabe tyrant who shed blood will be on your hands. And yeah, this is this is a difficult video to make. And you know, maybe I'll look back at this video and think maybe maybe it wasn't the right video to make at this time. I, I think it is. And I would say to you, if you're in the gun grabbers club, be careful what you wish for. You're not going to bring those sixty some odd people back. And honestly, prohibition isn't going to prevent the next group of people that might be murdered by a madman or a madwoman. Whatever devices they might want to use, whether it's a knife, whether it's a gun, whether it's a car, whether it's a bomb, sick people will find a way to kill. And you ain't going to stop it. And enabling and empowering an organization, an entity that already has a monopoly of force so that you might feel safe. It's going to have the exact opposite effect. And many of you gun grabbers, you're all ready to jump in and, and, and call out and say how Donald Trump is this tyrannical regime and you think he's a Nazi. And Wow. If you're willing to believe that, that a Nazi took power in America, then how are you not willing to believe that a government could turn against you, even a government in America? 
How are you not willing to believe that? You take that in. You take that in, gun grabbers. And I'll tell you, I'll leave you with one last thing, gun grabbers. Like I said, we will not go gently into that nude night. There's millions of us across all types of ideological definitions, including a growing number of people on the American left who are starting to understand and realize that the right to self-defense is a pretty fundamental right. They're, we're growing, and we're not going away. My heart goes out to all those who died and all those who were injured and all the folks touched by that horrible tragedy in Las Vegas. My heart goes out to them, my prayers. But even at that, no, I will not go gently into that good night and say, okay, people have died. I guess it's time for me to surrender my right to self-defense. It's not going to happen. Usually I do a call, like, subscribe, whatever. I'm not doing it. I'm just, I'm just going to end it with that. I'll see you the next time.